Hiya 12, this is Mr. Lim here again, and this is going to be our video on the production of biodiesels. Alright, so, biodiesels, and remember we're going to link them to previous chemistry topics. Okay, so, biodiesel. Diesel is the fuel you put in cars. Okay, diesel is a petroleum product, comes from fossil fuels. Biodiesel is a plant animal product which makes it renewable. Okay, so biodiesel is a fuel that you can put into your car, but it's a renewable because it comes from plant and animal products. Okay, so the first step is um, that biodiesel is formed from a triglyceride, and you've seen triglycerides before, uh, from soaps. Okay, so remember it is a uh, triple long chain carbon with your carboxylate groups there. Okay, and so you remember what that looks like, hopefully. All right, so that's a triglyceride and methanol to form methyl long chain esters. Okay, so instead of you getting rid of these and making um, them, you know, minus ends to make soap particles, instead of that, what you're doing to them, what you're doing there to them is adding on a methyl group. Okay, and that methyl group makes it a methyl ester. Okay, some some sort of methyl, and then however long that part is, uh, ester. Okay, and so these uh, particles here can be used uh, and burnt and you know as fuel and they power the, the car okay so that's what this um, uh, forms okay so it's a long chain ester which is the biodiesel and glycerol it's a glycerol like and so is a batch process which is different to all the others okay so yield is very important as well as rate okay so you mix the methanol and oil together in a reaction chamber okay and then the conditions are different depending on the catalyst type Okay, so you dump them all together, and then because there's no gases in this, um, it is going to be a, um, you don't have to worry about pressure too much, it's just done at atmospheric pressure, um, and then depending on the catalyst used, the temperature. So, okay, so if you do a base um, catalyst, uh, you you have it at 60 to 70 degrees. I know I just said that you don't worry about the pressure too much, but you keep the pressure high to make sure that the methanol doesn't boil off in at the 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. So you keep the pressure high to keep the methanol in the um, in liquid state. Okay. Uh, it runs for 30 to 60 minutes, and then the catalyst is deactivated in the reaction. So the catal the catalyst is sometimes like a sodium hydroxide or a potassium hydroxide. Okay. Strong base. Okay, and it achieves a 98% yield in that 60 or so minutes. Okay, which is pretty good. You, however, can create a soap as an unwanted side reaction. Okay, so remember, how do you make soap? You just have sodium uh, hydroxide and triglyceride. And so generally, you need lots of soap, or three times as much soap uh, than you do oil. So if you put in lots of catalyst for this, what can happen is that you make soap instead of... Um, the, the biodiesel, okay, which is not very useful. Okay, so that's what happens if you use a base as a catalyst. The other catalyst that you can use is what's called a lipase, which is an enzyme that um, breaks down lipids, which are triglycerides, and then it will put on the methanol, methanol group uh, for you. Okay, so uh, it's done at biological temperatures, so no, la no hotter than 37 degrees Celsius, okay, which means that you don't have to use as much energy to heat it up. It's done at atmospheric pressure, which means you don't even need to um, you don't need to keep uh, you don't need to pressurize the container. So remember, the only reason why we kept this at high temperatures is because it's sorry high pressure is because of the high temperatures here. So the high pressure would keep the methanol in uh, liquid form at 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. But because you're at much lower temperature, you don't need to keep the methanol in liquid form because it'll still be in liquid form, and so therefore you don't need to have that higher pressure and you don't need to pressurize this thing. Okay, one disadvantage is that it takes much longer, uh, however, the catalyst can be reused, however, you don't get as much of a yield, right, which is not great, okay, um, however, you're not going to also, you're also not going to create soap as an unwanted side reaction, okay, so the second part of it, so you take your mixture, which is either very, like, 98% pure from the base catalyzed, or it's, um, you know, like, 92% pure from the lipase catalyzed, and then you try and separate it out. Okay, so the mixture at the end is triglyceride, methanol, biodiesel, and glycerol, and some of your catalysts if you've got them in there. All right, so ultimately then you've got two polar substances, 
which are the methanol and the glycerol, and two non-polar substances, the triglyceride and the biodiesel, and will separate out due to solubility. So effectively, you can have two layers like oil and water, where this will be the like water layer, and this will be the oil-like layer, right? And so you can, as you can see, the glycerol layer um, sinks and the triglyceride layer and the biodiesel layer floats, okay? And so what you can do is you can let it sit there for a little bit and then they'll separate into their two layers, right? Um, why doesn't it separate out into its two layers in the first reactor chamber? Um, probably because you're continuously mixing it because, you know, mixing is good, right? Uh, then the mostly glycerol and the mostly biodiesel are put into distillation columns, um, and they're separated via fractional distillation. So you can go uh, try and remember what fractional distillation is and how they separate out stuff by different boiling points. And then you end up with glycerol, you end up with biodiesel, and then you end up with a little bit of methanol and maybe a little bit of oil, and that gets pumped back, back into the reactor. Okay, so technically it's a continuous because they don't, I don't think they pump it directly back into the reactor, but what they do is that they probably just like save it to put back into the reactor later on. Okay, so that is the production of biodiesels. Uh, yes, yeah, so there you go, return back into the reaction table. Okay, so some links to other chemistry ideas. There's green chemistry principles, the fact that you're making biodiesel instead of normal diesel. You're using the lipase catalase catalyst instead of the base, which uses less energy. It's a renewable catalyst. Equilibrium concepts uh, use catalysts, but not really that much on equilibrium. Um, this is organics kind of linked things because you're producing esters for all intents and purposes and you don't have to use methanol. Um, you can use ethanol and other stuff to make different length chain esters. Okay, so that's just another idea that if you get put like, hey, let's not make biodiesel with methanol, let's make biodiesel with ethanol. Can you still make that? Right. And the whole uh, part at the end about separation by solubility and boiling point, making sure that you recognize, okay, well, why does this, uh, why are they soluble in different things? And why is it that they have different boiling points? Okay, uh, so just make sure that you have an understanding of those. And if you don't ask, all right, that's it. And I'll see you next time. We're for the production of ethanol moonshine.